uh, in terms of uh, where the role of Islam has in this country, uh, nothing has changed. Nothing has shifted uh, to an extent that there could be others who say Islam terancam, you mm-hmm. know, like uh, oh Malays have have no rights anymore. They they will use certain refrains, you know. The 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 constant uh, bogeyman is DAP, uh, but uh, I think we have also have to show that. Uh, the teachings of Islam do not necessarily have to be exactly as how some of these uh, political leaders from the other side show them to be. BFM 89.9, this is The Breakfast Grill. I'm Keith Kam. One year ago, we had our new Minister of Communications and Digital on this show. Shortly after that, Fami Fadil was appointed spokesperson for the Madani government because in this day and age, making sure the correct official message is disseminated effectively to the public is more crucial than ever before. Perhaps this is why the original communications and digital ministry was broken into two about a month ago with Gobin Singh Dio becoming the digital minister and Fami the communications minister. So great to have you back on BFM, Fami. Thanks for having me. Fami, let's start with a little bit of a look back uh, during your one year as the Communications and Digital Minister. What are you most proud of to have achieved? I think um, if, there's, if there's one thing you, you, you'd ask, you know, um, I would say it's uh, handling the, the whole 5G rollout. Mm-hmm. I think um, when I came in, I didn't expect to, to uh, one, be in the portfolio, two, handle this, this huge issue. Uh, bear in mind, the uh, out of the five uh, major mobile network operators, three are publicly listed, and I think their market cap at one point probably is about 140 billion ringgit. So, sitting down with these big boys, right, and then it's an uh, experience. It's an experience. So, uh, sometime very soon, we have some very major announcements. So, uh, hopefully, you know, uh, it's 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 one thing what, that which I'm. Um, very, very proud of uh, the work that we've done. Uh, and that uh, apart from that, probably um, it's, you know, I, I think that we hope will will help to accelerate uh, certain uh, spheres of, or, or rather uh, certain areas of, of uh, growth, yeah? particularly uh, among SMEs, uh, mm. major industries. So I believe that this little contribution uh, hopefully will go a long way. Uh, towards uh, our economic growth. I, I so want to get into that with you a little bit more. Um, what is unfinished business for you? Um, I mean, 5G is still an ongoing thing, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the departments uh, that has been shifted to uh, digital ministry is the uh, personal data protection department. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so GPDP, Jabatan Pelindungan Data Pribadi. We worked really hard with the team and we had a new director general come in uh, maybe within the first few months of last year. Mm-hmm. And uh, this this DG, Dr. Uh, Nazri uh, Kama, has been able to turn the entire department around with a small work, uh, small workforce with a less, about less than 50 people. They were able to, in three months, uh, particularly the last quarter of the year, uh, register 8,000 uh, companies right. uh, for uh, personal data protection. Uh, um, how do you say? Make sure that they're on the list right. compared to what used to be previously for the whole year, 2,000 companies. So um, we've also worked very hard to prepare a draft bill uh, to amend the Personal Data Protection Act, uh, Akta 709, which we hope will be tabled by March. So, my dear good friend, uh, Wabi Gobin, that will be, be, be his baby yeah. from now on. We, 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 we brought it right, <laughs> right up to the very end. But there'll be some changes uh, and we hope that that will see the light of day. I'm sure he appreciates that. But so now that your portfolio has sort of been, I guess, split into two, does that mean your workload is proportionally reduced maybe? No, not at all. Um, so uh, as the uh, official spokesperson for the government and the cabinet, mm. uh, I have to make sure that we understand for the ministry, everything, almost everything that goes on with the other ministries. And our role is to help facilitate, uh, to amplify, to make sure that messages, uh, the key messages, yeah. reach the target audience, uh, and if it's not working, to assist the respective ministries uh, to hone their message, to assist them whether it's through official channels or uh, through uh, Jabatan Penerangan, the the information yeah. department, uh, and uh, all the way down into the community. So. Um 
in that light, we know that Bernama, uh, JCOM, that's the Community Communications Department, the Information Department, uh, Broadcasting Department, that's RTM, uh, National Film De- Development Corporation Malaysia, MCMC, they are amongst those agencies that will come under your purview. Uh, let's start with uh, JCOM, which was previously under the PM's department and saw some scandal of its own. That's a whole different story. You and Niching, you, uh, that's your deputy, they've, they've admitted, you've admitted that it needs an overhaul. My, my question is, first of all, what overhaul are we talking about? Mm. Uh, the other one is, is it even still necessary? Yeah, I think uh, I think there's still uh, a role to be played by this this uh, en- entity, this uh, department. Um, when it was first set up a long time ago, as JASA, uh, uh, yeah, JASA, J- Jabatan Halewal Has, mm-hmm. yeah, very early on, uh, it had a specific uh, function, a role. Uh, and then over the years, uh, it, it changed. There were permutations. There were maybe some people might call mutations. Uh, but we need to understand the what that original function is, mm-hmm. whether it's relevant in today's uh, day and age. So given that this is the first working week of the new year, uh, we've had our very first uh, post-cabinet meeting um, uh, on the uh, 3rd of uh, January where JCOM uh, formally sits in now. Uh, so we will begin a process of assessing, reviewing, uh, and coordinating. Um, and I think we might we might work to uh, recalibrate some of the function of this this uh, department. Because it's supposed to be the government's communications arm to convey Putrajaya's message to the, to the people. Um, and it was a similar sort of responsibility that, that JASA had. Mm. And, and, and during your time as, as opposition, you, you, you guys kind of alluded to the fact that what JASA did was mainly propaganda. Mm. Uh, how different would JCOM's responsibilities be uh, compared to, say, the broadcasting department or, or, or the information department, for that matter? Yeah, uh, a lot of these departments are also technical. They're, they're technical in nature. So mm-hmm. when you talk about penyaran, when you talk about broadcast, uh, they handle uh, TV, radio, and now, uh, of course, OTT. Um, but I think the one of the one of the key things that probably we need uh, to strengthen is to understand uh, how messaging works okay. now in today's day and age. Given that uh, we really work in an omnidirectional. Um, kind of a communications environment ecosystem. Now, this this world today, uh, you can no longer ignore everything that happens everywhere For sure. on, on social media particularly. But on, not only that, sometimes there's a disjuncture between what happens on social media and what's taking place um, on, on the ground. Right, so we have to see where these where these mismatches are, where um, the message of the government uh, is, like for example, the prime minister uh, constantly um, uh, reminds cabinet about this this issue uh, when he launched uh, uh, when he announced this this policy about um, uh, increasing the subsidy for. Uh, the paddy seeds, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, benih paddy, for the first time in 25 years. So that increase was a major increase, and yet somehow uh, the 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 paddy planters, the pesawah paddy, somehow that message didn't get to them. Even though you can populate social media, but perhaps they're not on social media. Right. So I I foresee that the role uh, of this ministry, not only of JCOM, but right. of this ministry, uh, is to make sure that. Uh, the work, the policies, the announcements, the programs announced by government reaches down to the ground and is understood. Um, it's a tall order, yes. For, for sure. Yeah, because like when, um, when, I, when you think about the effectiveness of uh, JCOM, for that matter, um, mm. I, I, you, it would have expected you know, the results of the by-election, for example, to mm. be some sort of a, a, a benchmark, but it shows that it yeah, kind of does show that it's not as effective. They, the message isn't yeah. exactly reaching the public. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, perhaps before this, it, it wasn't as effective. Right. Uh, so I, I wouldn't say it, it falls on the shoulders of JCOM alone. Yeah. Um, it's it's a, uh, obviously it's it's a it's a team effort. Uh, 
and and really it's about making sure that all parts of the team whether if you take a football analogy yeah. you know uh, the keeper the forward the midfielders are all working well together uh, it's not just about the striker who 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 gets the goals but it's also making sure that you know that entire chain is is strengthened so that's why when jcom was uh, announced as being returned to uh, this ministry yes uh, and, and we have to recall that the origins of this ministry i remember when my mom you know my mom used to be uh, uh, an under secretary of uh, this ministry back in 1989 1990 working with uh, um, one of my predecessors obviously uh, arwah uh, datuk muhammad rahmat yeah and and she used to tell me uh, you know fami this ministry you know it used to be known as uh, propaganda ministry mm-hmm. yeah i mean of course in today's day and age that doesn't necessarily translate uh, exactly as that and people people shun propaganda right but it's about information it's about communicating so i foresee jcom probably will uh, have a completely different role than what it used to do particularly in the last few years but what that role exactly is uh, i can't tell you exactly right now because uh, we have just received them so we need to assess we need to look at the entire uh, chain like i mentioned to you are they better as a defender are they better in midfield or you know would they be left wing left wing uh, right wing you know <laughs> so, so to speak football analogy not political uh, analogy um, and and i think um, this is this is a, a very important um time mm-hmm. we need to take stock we need to uh really assess uh, and i foresee hopefully within by the end of the first quarter uh, things will be in place uh finas is under your mm-hmm. ministry now uh, there've been a lot of arguments about how restrictive the local film industry is the control that is imposed on producers and writers so i mean we've seen like films uh, internationally acclaimed films like tiger stripes about they they have always required foreign collaborations what do you think can finas do to encourage uh, oscar worthy films be produced like entirely locally yeah actually um you know i th- i think people misunderstand um uh, lembaga penapisan filem is under kdn not under my purview i'm not a member of that of that uh, board at all uh, the censorship board mm-hmm. yeah that finas is part of that board uh, but finas also is in the the work that they do is to develop the local uh, filmmaking industry uh, i think the work Uh, has shown a lot of not only promise but also results particularly in 2023 uh, the number of uh, malaysian films that are showing uh, in international film festivals i think is is very admirable uh, not only uh, in terms of our box office collections uh, so finas has a role to look at the entire uh, chain yeah the, the entire uh, value chain for uh, filmmaking so it goes from pre-production production post production uh, and and beyond uh, so it's about getting good ideas uh, and then how do you put the good ideas in a way in the form of script that you can pitch to various people uh, or various entities to uh, get funding so that you can put your production together uh, making sure that we have excellent scripts i think this is this is going to be a challenge in 2022 finas did this program called my lab mm-hmm. yeah uh, and it was a uh, very fruitful uh, and the result was um, uh, for example uh, we had four of the participants uh, go to busan the busan film festival and pitch there uh, and some of them managed to get uh funding some of them went on to other festivals as well uh, so we can see that there's value add in the work that finas does uh, i foresee two two areas and i've indicated to finas one is pre production uh how do we make sure that uh the scripts that we put together are you know, i wouldn't say just oscar worthy but rotterdam film festival worthy can film festival worthy malaysian film festival worthy you know cinema worthy right uh, quality quality uh, 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 scripts uh, and also marketing uh, we find that sometimes the assistance that provided the funds that's that's deployed uh, it falls short because uh, the producers and the the marketing team just hope for 
tayangan wajib, the compulsory viewing, uh, the compulsory screening uh, scheme uh, to help them pull through. Uh, so this is where I feel uh, Finas has to help uh, producers and, and teams work to make sure that uh, people understand when they invest in, in marketing for their films, then you will have some returns. The um, Pandata was, was uh, totally crowd, crowdfunded. Do you, do you think mm. um, this might be a way for Malaysian filmmakers to, to, to go going forward? Yeah, crowdfunding is not new. I think uh, there, there are people... Actually, um, the most democratic aspect of filmmaking happened around 2003-2004 when we went from 35mm to digital. And uh, now, you could say in terms of production, anyone can... Can, can participate just with uh, a good phone, a good camera, and, and you can do it all, you know, you could almost do anything uh, on your phone. That's why we can see content creators on TikTok earn mm. thousands of ringgit, probably, some of them probably earn more than me, <laughs> you know, and, and more than and you. Me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. More than me and you combined. Um, so I think, I think uh, 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 definitely uh, films like Pendatang, uh, you know, uh, they're trying to show new business models, new ways of making works uh, that can um, go to specific audiences and reach out to different audiences. Uh, and, you know, I, 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 I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, last one is uh, previously under KKD, there was you, you engage a lot with uh, TikTok, Instagram and other uh, social media platforms on issues like safety and censorship. Now that uh, it's been split into different portfolios, how will these efforts be impacted and, and how will you and Gobin be working together on this? Um, regulation will be via MCMC, so that, that, that will still be under me. Yeah, and uh, I think um, one of the one of the thinking behind the split was um, digital economy is a huge part of uh, the uh, NIMP game mm. plan, and and so uh, a lot of the work needed to be more focused, and uh, it is better that a lot of policies are spearheaded by one ministry. Right now, there are at least five, actually, uh, no, four ministries. Uh, previously, so KKD, MITI. Uh, the economy ministry and mosti uh, different parts between startups vcs scale ups um, exports imports uh, so reporting so now um, a lot of that will be under one ministry and and so it, we would be better prepared to to uh, assess and and go forward but with regards to regulation and, and regulating communications. So that will be under me. Before we head into the first break, uh, as a spokesperson for Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim, I was just wondering, why has it been so difficult uh, for a little local independent radio station like BFM to secure an interview with the man himself? I mean, he has given time to CNN, Time, CNA, Bloomberg, just name a few. What, what does a station like BFM need to do? Inshallah. I will convey. Inshallah. Fami, um, the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, that's MCMC, is now uh, under your purview. What is going on with Digital National Berhad currently, which, I, if I understand correctly, had always been an MCMC baby? Yeah, it's well, technically it's not an MCMC baby because um, MCMC regulates uh, mm -hmm. the rollout of whether it's 2, 3, 4G, 5G onwards. Uh, so they're really a licensee. Right. Yeah, so they, they hold um, uh, NFP, NSP license uh, from MCMC. Uh, they're an SPV owned by MOF Inc. Yep. Uh, and we oversee right now, particularly given that in February of 2023, the Prime Minister made an announcement during the tabling of budget at that time about how um, we are uh, going to, at that time, uh, set certain priorities for DNB, particularly mm -hmm. roll out to 80% of uh, coverage of public area by end of 2023. Uh, we are, as we're doing this recording, we have not yet received the latest figures that have been audited by MCMC. So I'm not in a place to, to, to say anything yet. Uh, but as of end November, we were at about 76%, so about 4% shy of 80% uh, target. Uh, DNB, uh, as we saw on the 1st of December, had uh, finally uh, gotten the share subscription agreement signed by the five, the five major telcos. Yeah. telcos. Um, and that had been something which was a, a, 
both a, a, a mental roadblock as well as an equity roadblock uh, in in participating um, to towards ensuring that we have 80% coverage of uh, popular area for 5G across the nation. Uh, so that's done. And uh, the, the capital injection by all of the MNOs, I think it was about 233 million odd right. per, per telco. That's right. Uh, and um, now... Uh, I've not yet met with the, the board or the team since that uh, share subscription agreement was signed. Uh, but we hope to be able to resolve certain technical issues. A lot of people complain. One, about drop calls. Mm -hmm. So I have instructed MCMC uh, and MCMC has worked with DNB and the telcos to uh, turn on certain features. <clears throat> Uh, and it has it's, it's it's a technical issue between the 700 and 900 megahertz uh, spectrum bands. So now uh, we hope that uh, 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 there won't be so much of a problem. Uh, God willing, on the 9th of January we will be doing a test drive with uh, all of the MNOs along with all of uh, media uh, to to go from Parliament to Putrajaya right. and test. Um, whether there are drop calls yeah, on this on this does, uh, road. Does DNB actually come under uh, your ministry right now? Or, Not yet. Uh, we, <laughs> there's no confirmation on that? No, no. Um, so... Uh, as of this this recording, uh, we've not yet uh, finalised mm -hmm. uh, which agencies, not just DNB, but certain other agencies as well, not under uh, whether it's between my ministry and and uh, the digital ministry, uh, but also some others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I think we have to wait a little bit uh, for an announcement from uh, the chief secretary of the government. Right. Uh, or and or the Prime Minister. But we hope that by mid-January, uh, a lot of uh, this would be finalised and that uh, work continues. In the meantime, um, this ministry, the Ministry of Communications via MCMC, is coordinating to make sure that the national objective of reaching 80% coverage uh, is reached for 5G. I, want, I was wondering if I could get into a little bit about the Malaysian Media Council. Uh, that's mm -hmm. something that's been in the works for, for quite a long time. Uh, I was at the initial meetings when Minister Gobin at the time kicked things off. Um, I know that the plan is for this MMC to be formed via an Act of Parliament. How are plans for it to be tabled by the March Day 1 Rakyat sitting? Are we still on track with that? Yeah, uh, I think we've gotten most of the feedback from the Pro Tem Committee. Uh, we are running the gauntlet of um, getting uh, feedback from different um, ministries. Uh, and I think once things are in place, uh, we will bring it to Parliament. We hope that we can bring it uh, in time for the March session, if not uh, the mid-year session. What have been the main issues of contention from, from, your, from your side? Uh, some of it is about uh, issues about participation, who should be on the board, mm. how, how big the board should be, whether this, this council should get funding from the government or should it run completely on its own. Um, so how should it be financed? How should we fund it? Yeah, right. And um, uh, so uh, th there are some uh, uh, these these kind of administrative questions that have to be uh, put into the the actual bill. So we are still going through. Uh, we're, we're waiting for responses from the other ministries. So probably, I hope that by latest latest is uh, mid year. I, I guess one of the things that um, a lot of journalists uh, and those in the media are concerned about is the fact that it has to be independent with no government um, intervention, so to mm. speak. But at the same time, uh, we kind of have to acknowledge that that journalists from RTM and Bernama, they are journalists. They mm. should be part of the media council. Mm. And and they are also part of the government. How do you resolve that? Yeah, this this is, um, I mean, uh, we have to make sure, we have to balance between the Code of Conduct and, and their role as uh, not only government agencies, but also civil servants. Right. Uh, so that's why some of the decisions that need to be made, uh, it will have some bearing. Yeah, so uh, I think there are always carve outs, yeah, and uh, for specific reasons, uh, not only in this case, but in many other cases. Uh, and I think it would not be out of the norm uh, to, to see uh, mm -hmm. these kind of carve outs. What's most important is that uh, there are, what, what is the objective yeah, of the, the Media Council? Uh, it's to self regulate, it's to make sure that. 
uh, media is in a position to uh, to affect some kind of uh, change uh, that is led by uh, the industry itself. Uh, I think this is important. This is something which uh, I myself, as a firm and strong and long advocate of uh, uh, free uh, media, uh, media freedoms, yeah, uh, a free press. Uh, so I've I've long been an advocate, even in my private life. You know, yeah. uh, way way uh, from a long time ago. Uh, but in my role as a minister of communications for this Madani government, it's also I have to also look uh, after the interest of the government itself. Yeah, so we have to balance this. Yeah, and, and speaking of that kind of a balance, I mean, you, I, I was quite heartened to see that you know you you assured that there will be no iron fisted clamp down on media reporting, but. Like you said, how do you balance uh, allegations and claims and misinformation made by people like, uh, you know, the more famous ones like Raja Petra, Kamarudin, Zake Naik and all these people, mm. which can sometimes be inflammatory? Yeah, well, uh, when we say th there's, there's, there's freedom of expression as guaranteed under the constitution, uh, and then there's the operations of media. Yeah. And uh, for us, when, when we talk about media, it's really about media that is organized mm -hmm. media that is, uh, in the case of, uh, say, BFM, for example, registered, licensed, uh, and reporters have uh, the uh, media accreditation cards right. from Jabatan Penerangan. Uh, so as far as the government is concerned, when we say media, this, this, is, this is largely what we refer to. Uh, for private citizens and citizen journalists, for example, um, right now there are no specific. Uh, how how do you say? Uh, we approach them as we would private citizens. Mm -hmm. yeah, so if there, uh, whatever laws apply to private citizens would also apply uh, to them. Uh, so in the course of uh, formulating and and putting together this uh, media council, uh, we take all of this into consideration. Ideally, eventually. The council itself will self-regulate yeah, right. the, the media industry. Uh, but uh, it does not mean that uh, things like, say, uh, defamation or defamatory, uh, 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 how, how do you say, statements can be made willy-nilly. No. Yeah. Uh, the laws still apply. Uh, the penal code still applies. Uh, the Communications Multimedia Act still applies. Uh, so those safeguards are there. So it's not... Uh, how do you say, it's not uh, a proverbial uh, do-as-you-please yeah. kind of uh, scenario. We all have our parts to play to make sure that communication uh, of information, uh, one, that information is uh, verified, that information is correct, uh, because we have to also make sure that uh, we keep the peace. For me, one thing that I've always wondered and uh, with a little bit of envy is that uh, Singapore has its Channel News Asia. Uh, it's internationally known and dare I say, same level with Al Jazeera and your, your CNNs. Granted, they have to only focus on local Singapore news because there's not very much. <laughs> what is what is actually holding us back? I mean, we've got Bernama, we've got RTM. There was yeah. talk about mergers and all this. What's happening there? Uh, well, actually, uh, it, I, I'm not in a position to make formal announcements just yet, but I've actually asked my uh, the ministry and the agencies to look into this. Uh -huh. uh, we have to bear in mind that in come 2025, Malaysia will chair ASEAN. And if there's a good time to, to make sure that Malaysia has some kind of media channel that can speak to ASEAN at the very least or portray and, and, and put our best foot forward, uh, I believe that you know within the Ministry of Communications, we would have to step up to that plate. Uh, and uh, I think it's not impossible. I think uh, there are certain things that we need to recalibrate. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mentioned to the team, ideally, you, so it's not just about JCOM, it's about uh, Bernama, it's about RTM. Um, and we have a, a new strategic direction that, uh, I have conveyed to the ministry. So we hope that uh, hopefully by end of the first quarter, we would have certain things in place. Uh, and in time for uh, when Malaysia assumes the chair of ASEAN, 
hopefully we will have something by then. So this new strategic direction, would it encompass something like a merger of J- JCOM, RTM, and Bernard? Not, not merger, those departments are still there. Yeah. Because the thing that I've I've come to appreciate in, in civil service is uh, things like Punche Kwasa, where's your source of authority coming from? Uh, things like warrants for positions and, and, and uh, jawatan, you know? So, so I think by and large, those are still there. Uh, but we might have a strategic pivot for some of our agencies with regards to your question earlier. Uh, I, I think I think Malaysia will play quite a, an important role. Yeah? And we've seen how uh, PMX, uh, very early on, the focus of a lot of his um, diplomatic effort, primarily, especially in the first six months, was ASEAN. Right. Uh, building, strengthening relationships, um, ensuring that uh, we understand each other very well, work closely to uh, resolve problems, whether it's it's things related to borders, things related to resources, um, things l- looking at investments uh, and and tourism. Mm-hmm. You know, the most recent one between uh, PM Seta and, and Datuk Sri Anwar uh, about Hadiai, about Phuket and, and Langkawi, uh, some of these these things, yeah, for example. Uh, so we know that the Prime Minister has this emphasis or this focus. And uh, I think uh, this ministry will need uh, some way to communicate uh, these broad positions, uh, particularly to an international audience. I, I think you're right. Uh, it's time that uh, not only our good, kindly southern neighbour uh, has a, a, a channel, a news, news agency, uh, like that, I think it's time that we we step forward too. Fami, just before we go into the 8.30 a.m. news break, uh, you were on nearly a year ago. You did say that you couldn't make any promises then. And our listeners are still asking me why BFM is not broadcasting nationwide. What are your thoughts on that? So that, well, we can ensure accurate and news information is disseminated to the racket just as your administration intends. Ha ha! Same question like you you had, uh, the, the BFM team had last year. <laughs> so this time around, um, in fact, on, on the way up, uh, just now, I I spoke to uh, the 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 big boss here, and uh, I mentioned that you know last year it took me some time to really understand uh, what was uh, how things work in the ministry. Now I can see that uh, some of these concerns can be properly addressed. Uh, immediately after this, I will be continuing some conversation with with uh, uh, your dear beloved Malik. BFM 89.9, welcome back to this extended breakfast grill. We are talking to Communications Minister Fami Fadil, also PKR's Information Chief and the Communications Director for Pakatan Harapan. And you've got a lot more uh, hats that you're wearing. Yes, I'm also the uh, Chairman of the uh, Strategic Communications Committee uh, for Mm -hmm. the Madani Government. Fami, the last general election in November 2022 saw 18-year-olds take part in the democratic process for the first time. In the days and months leading up to the inclusion of this group, it was always thought that they would be more uh, Pakatan Harapan inclined, um, me included actually. The six state elections later showed that they were leaning more towards Prakata National and hence uh, the Green Wave occurred. Was this some kind of Undi 18 miscalculation on, on your team's part? Yeah, I think we didn't uh, fully have a, 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 an understanding of the that mindset shift. Or if I could put it, uh, it's, it's also a mode of communication shift. Um, you could say that GE15, uh, particularly in terms of communication, was a TikTok. Um, elections, mm-hmm. yeah, it was a TikTok general elections. Uh, whether we've we've seen, you know, for example, I think two thousand eight was, you know, people would call it a blog. You know, blogs were a main mode of communication, and then we had Facebook for a while. Uh, so now it's it's really um, uh, TikTok. Whether that's really going to be the case uh, going to GE sixteen and onwards, uh, time will tell. Yeah, uh, it's it's really about at that time. Uh, I think. We were, uh, yeah, I think we were taken by surprise. Um, And I think marshalling resources for social media is quite onerous. Yeah, it's not 
as simple as as one would think. Uh, the monies involved, the the kind of resources that need to be uh, deployed, right. uh, the kind of coordination across uh, multiple key opinion leaders, influencers. Yeah. You know, we we saw some of these influence operations uh, taking place at that time. Um, and you know there were some there were some allegations. Uh, you know, I, I remember between the nineteenth of November and the twenty fourth of November when the prime minister took his oath of office, there was a sudden spike in uh, the kind of videos that were propagated on TikTok, yeah. uh, fomenting. Uh, some kind of riot, uh, some kind of you know laying on this rather rather uh, dangerous narrative about May 13. I, I remember this, and I remember as as a uh, an ordinary MP who had at that time not yet taken his oath of office uh, or my oath in Parliament. I requested a meeting with MCMC mm -hmm. and highlighted how this is a major problem. You see, that's the, that's the one thing that um, I did notice and it was quite worrying to a lot of us as well. Uh, yeah. the, the fact that what we saw post GE15 was that there was a, a, there was a, a chasm between the, um, I suppose, the words we could use is conservatives versus uh, yeah. progressives, right? With that knowledge uh, that you have now, how do you plan to strategize going forward yeah. into GE16? Well, uh, my, my role now as uh, not only PKR's information chief, uh, but also as a minister of communications, it's, it's really about understanding um, what that, the heartbeat of the nation and understanding the mindset of different groups and segments of people. Uh, and, and then uh, positively, uh, changing minds and winning hearts, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, it's it's really about showing how, with this prime minister and this administration, for the first time in so many years, we have never seen a prime minister, for example, who had the the political wherewithal to uh, inform. I I I dare dare, dare I say instruct uh, Bernas to share profit with uh, petty planters, right? Never before, never before, and for the first time in twenty five years, for example, um, uh, the the subsidy for uh, uh, seedlings for paddy seedlings, uh, paddy seeds, uh, was increased for the first time in twenty five years. Uh, we've seen in the last one year uh, the amount of assistance or the amount of allocations and and rights being returned uh, to Sabah and Sarawak, the most probably that that we've seen in in a long time, uh, and. And so it's it's with this basis, the work that we're doing now, not only uh, the fight against corruption uh, and trying to make uh, government uh, more efficient in delivery of not only services, but subsidies. Uh, I think it's very important that people understand what value this ethos, mm -hmm. the ethos of this administration can bring for the future of the nation. But, but do you feel any concern, the fact that, um, you know, Said Sadiq, who represents uh, the, the, the youth and who was one of those who was championing Undi 18, mm. that, that he has withdrawn support for the government, that, that you might be losing that, uh, the attention of the 18-year-olds? Um, you know what's interesting? Uh, I, I did some math in cabinet. Uh, more than a third of our uh, cabinet ministers are under the age of 50. Uh, our youngest cabinet minister is uh, Stephen Sim, Chi yeah. Kiong, yeah, the Minister of Human Resource. Um, he's barely 38, 39, mm -hmm. right? He's, he's young. And I think uh, people like Hana Yo, uh, myself, in fact, uh, Iwan Benedict, the president of UPCO, uh, Minister of uh, Corporation, uh, Cooperatives, yeah, uh, Kuskop, he, he's 40, 41. He's younger than me. I, 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 I didn't know that. Um, so I think we have... Uh, young people in in cabinet, and I think probably this cabinet is is more youthful than a lot of other previous cabinets. Not only is it lighter in terms of uh, uh, size, in terms of uh, the number of uh, cabinet ministers, but uh, in terms of age, also, also on average much younger. Uh, and and I think we will have to work hard to understand across the nation from Perlis to Sabah. What is it that young people want? What is it that the, the different segments of, of, of um, society want? 
And that's why with the political stability of 2023, what we've been able to achieve are five key announcements. Um, so it's Economy Madani, which is a, a quite a comprehensive framework, raising the roof, raising the floor. It's the NIMP, the New Industrial Master Plan, the Energy Transition Roadmap, um, also the announcement about review of a government um, wages as well as the progressive wage policy. So the focus for 2024 and onwards is economy, economy, economy. And what that means is for ordinary, whether uh, ordinary Malaysians, mm -hmm. particularly young people who are looking for jobs through NIMP, Economy Madani, progressive wage policy, uh, we will, inshallah, in the next few years, see better jobs, better pay, uh, while at the same time, uh, ministries like KPDN will be working very hard using uh, the resources at hand to curb the illegal uh, uh, pilfering of whether it's uh, minyak masa or, or other uh, commodities, uh, making sure that prices are kept uh, low and controlled. I, I get that you are uh, you are championing the economy, uh, a good governance, and and uh, ensuring the benefits for 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 everyone. But uh, how effective do you think this will be uh, uh, against a, 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 a an opposition that is championing something that's more mono ethnic and mono religious? You you mean to say extremist? Yeah. You 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 can you can use that word. Right. I mean I mean that's that's really what we've seen. Uh, in in Islamic theology and also in, in Islamic history, there was a, a political grouping that uh, appeared um, yeah, particularly uh, during the time of the uh, fourth caliph, yeah? uh, what we call the Khawarij group. And to them, they are holier than thou. Mm -hmm. They are, uh, if you were to listen to them, uh, you were to watch them pray, you would feel, oh gosh, I, I will never enter heaven. But, but they will just slight you because you do not share the same political beliefs. I think it's important for us to understand where is the center? Where is the middle ground? Uh, have we gone too far? Okay. Are certain teachings mm -hmm. espoused, are certain tendencies shown by some of the leaders of these extremist uh, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're quite, they're quite uh, extremist in their views. Yeah? Uh, and that's why um, one of the key things that, that my ministry and this administration will have to do is show that not only uh, in the first year we've shown that in terms of um, the Malay Muslim agenda, uh, in terms of uh, where the role of Islam has in this country, uh, nothing has changed. Nothing has shifted uh, to an extent that there could be others who say, Islam terancam, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, oh, Malays have, have no rights anymore. They, they will use certain refrains, you know, the, the, the constant uh, bogeyman is DAP. Uh, but uh, I think we have also have to show that uh, the teachings of Islam do not necessarily have to be exactly as how some of these uh, political leaders from the other side show them to be. Uh, in parliament, I'm shocked. Sometimes they could use um, uh, scripture to espouse such, uh, how do you say? Vitriol. Uh, such not only vitriol, but something which is almost nonsensical. Uh, the the target of eliminating uh, extreme poverty or, or poverty, mm. you know, that, that's a noble uh, objective and one which we would like to achieve. And yet they could use scripture to say, look, if there's no poverty, what will happen to, to zakat? Right. Uh, and, and, you know, they completely miss the message. So I think it's, it's very important for this administration. Uh, we are working very hard to have spokespersons, particularly what we call asatiza, mm. yeah, the, the ustas, uh, a group of them who will traverse the country, who will speak to communities um, and, and engage with different groups of, of people to show them that, you know, Islam is not just what some of these people espouse. Finally, Fami, what do you say to claims by Perikatan National that the current government might not even last the full five-year term because you know, they're pledging to continue <laughs> to try to destabilize you? Yeah. Um, uh, at one point, they will say, you know, okay, um, I, I remember, you know, okay, uh, start of the year, you know, oh, in, in, in May of 2023, they will fall. In June, in July, in August, bye-bye. Uh, in December, you know, and... and 
uh, I think enough is enough. Yeah, we've shown, despite uh, everything that they've tried to do to to destabilize, none of it has materialized. Uh, we've seen actually in the last few weeks, the statements made by uh, Abang Johari, the Premier of Sarawak, uh, Datuk Sri Hajiji, the Chief Minister of Sabah, mm-hmm. they've comprehensively and and uh, completely shut the door on these these uh, really regressive uh, initiatives to try and topple the government to tebuk atap to mm-hmm. to break through the roof yeah, so so someone was saying you know the prime minister mentioned that oh the roof is now concrete right uh, but then they they're trying to burrow uh, tunnels underneath but the floor already is concrete so i think my advice to uh, the leaders of uh, Perikatan Nasional, assuming many of them, you know, uh, listen to BFM, and I believe they do, uh, come to the uh, discussion table, come and negotiate, come and discuss, come and sit down. It's not about peruntukan. Uh, it's not about your allocations. It's about the future of the country. It's about sustaining uh, a healthy democracy for the sake of Malaysia and for our common future. Minister Fami Fadil, thank you so much for coming in and good luck to you. Thank you. On The Breakfast Grill this morning, we were talking to Fami Fadil, Minister of Communications and PKR's Information Chief. I'm Keith Kam for BFM 89.9, The Business Station.